Sword pen 
I'm with Public Access Channel 4, and we are here tonight with the uh, 3T Spooktac Art Spooktacular, if I can get the name right. But uh, it's the third Thursday art show, and I am sitting here with Adam Nicholson, and uh, he's with the pharmacy. How are you doing tonight, Adam? Oh, doing great. Thanks. And uh, 
tell us, uh, you know, just pretend no one knows what the pharmacy is. Everybody knows what the pharmacy is, of course. But, you know, just kind of pretend that no one knows what the pharmacy is. And tell us a little bit about the pharmacy. Sure, absolutely. Uh, the pharmacy is an artist-run co-op, gallery, studio, community center, um, literature and language and performing arts venue, you name it. Um, but uh, what it is, a bunch of artists came together, they decided to kind of pool and get some studio space and it's expanded from there. It's a gallery now, we do three major artist shows a year featuring all of our artists. We have open mics, we have writers critiques, artist critiques, and just all kinds of things. Very cool. Do you have any kind of website or anything that uh, for people want more information on how to join or anything? Oh, we've got a couple. We've got thepharmacygallery.com is our official website. Um, go figure, pharmacy.com was tough to get. Uh, but we also have a Facebook presence, uh, which we're perhaps, you know, maybe unfortunately a little bit better about updating, and that'll tell you all of the events going on and absolutely everything else. But, I think I get some spam email from pharmacy.com, so. Ah, well, that, that's not us. That's a, these are the pills. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, something about the uh, the cheap Viagra and all that stuff, so very cool. Uh, so were you one of the uh, the founders of the pharmacy, or what, what, all, what was your involvement, and how did you get started? You know, it's funny. I, I've been there nearly since the beginning. Not a, not a founder and, and not an artist. Uh, I, I came in. Really early on, I just kind of heard tell about this pharmacy place. It sounded like sort of a hip venue sort of a thing. I didn't know quite what they did, but I thought I'd go check it out. Um, and I caught wind that a local creative writing student and just sort of another local character, uh, Drew Dzinskis and Joey Cruz, uh, were putting together a writer's critique, writer's workshop. And I went to go check that out. And I kind of... I teach at the colleges here in town, Lincoln Land and UIS, and I kind of got, uh, you know, involved in sort of helping them with the workshop. Uh, about a month or two down the line, they were kind of, you know, one or the other was sort of pursuing this or that other conflict or something, and the workshop just sort of fell into my lap <laughs> over time. So now I host the Writer's Critique, uh, and I also hope, uh, host an open mic every month, fourth Thursday. Writer's Critique is second Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock, and the open mic is fourth Thursday of every month at seven o'clock but yeah that, that's how i got involved and i've been there nearly since the beginning i've been there about a year now don't you love it whenever someone else kind of sets something up and then just something happens where it just kind of gets tossed onto you so that's uh i've had a couple different things happen that way so it's always fun so but um uh, has uh drew tried to whip out any of his stand-up phonians or anything Oh, absolutely. Drew is, yeah, to this day, a regular attendee at the critiques and a regular attendee at the open mics. And he has brought some fantastic uh, shtick to the open mics, as well as a few, you know, really serious pieces about his experience in, uh, you know, political movements and such. Uh, the Occupy movement in St. Louis. He gave us a story of a run-in with the authorities there. And, uh, so so we, we, we've seen, you know, sort of the, the light end, and we've seen sort of the serious end of Drew's repertoire. I, uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to go to uh, some of the different comedy open mics. It was at Bar None a couple years back uh, by a friend of mine, Alan Perry, was the originator of that. And uh, Drew actually showed up with an axe, and that was the prop that he used for the entire performance he did. Does he ever show up with an axe at pharmacy? Not an axe specifically, but I am not remotely surprised. Uh, <laughs> Drew's done, you name it, he's shown up in just his overalls or a toga like we're seeing him tonight, you know. Um, he's brought out his big sandwich board, unicorn puppets, and, and you name it. He's, he's, he's a character. I'm trying to think of the best way to describe Drew tonight. He's obviously supposed to be Lady Liberty, but the first thing that comes to mind is Bubba Liberty. So do you think that would be an accurate description of Drew tonight? Well, if you need to get a mental image without looking, Bubba Liberty will pretty much cover it, I think, tonight. <laughs> Which uh, you will more than likely get to see Drew here in a little bit because we'll be interviewing him later for uh, some of the other events that we're having. Uh, speaking of some of the other events, uh, go ahead and plug these real quick. Uh, looks like uh, here at uh, Donnie's Homespun, they're going to have the Whalers in uh, November 9th at, uh, I don't see what time it is, but uh, information is at Donnie'sHomespun.com. And uh, then we also have the uh, 
Route 66 Film Festival that's going to be coming up November 2nd and 3rd. I don't know if that's going to be, uh, if this will be airing by the time to, to actually talk anything about that, but uh, the film festival is always a good time. And uh, speaking of upcoming events, I hear you have a couple different events coming up with the pharmacy. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, we've got the, the, the monthly writer's critiques and the monthly open mics. November 10th, from 6 to 9 p.m., we've got one of our major, you know, three times a year all artist shows at the pharmacy. Uh, we've got 15 of our artists. It's going to be a great time at the pharmacy warehouse space at 1022 South Passfield. Um, always a fairly big turnout. Really great art event here at Springfield, if I, you know, may say so myself, right? And um, the uh, pharmacy warehouse, that's a pretty recent uh, acquisition for y'all, right? Uh, no, we've been showing it at the warehouse actually the whole time. Um, we, we had an RX space, it, it kind of came and went this summer, uh, unfortunately. We, we, we closed the doors on that space just this last month. There was a change of landlords and a few other issues. But, uh, but the, the warehouse we're still showing at, and the main pharmacy space at the corner of Passfield and South Grand, we're still alive and kicking there. But Alive and kicking. I uh, unfortunately have not had a chance to go to very much of the pharmacy stuff, so I didn't know that the uh, the warehouse had always been there. But uh, I actually think um, in the warehouse's former life was a friend of mine's uh, garage, so I actually used to deliver there all the time. So I, I deliver car parts in my day job. So, um, so you got some uh, events coming up and everything. That's great. Uh, do you have any uh, shout-outs as far as any uh, artists or uh, – Speakers. I gotta look at a list. I can, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we got all of our artists. Uh, let, I, I gotta read. Reach one. Phil Ackerman, Jess Black, Pablo Nieves, Jim Edgecombe, JT Elliott, uh, Rachel Jennings, Judah Johnson, Jed Lieber, Felicia Olin, Danielle Pony, uh, Casey Richardson, Diane Schlehan, Janet Scro, Jeff Williams of Annihilate fame, and Dave Warren are showing at the November show, November 10th, 6 to 9. Very cool, very cool. And uh, what kind of, uh, what all do you say you teach at the, the colleges? Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I, I teach at Lincoln Land and UIS. I teach, I teach English. Go figure. You know, I'm <laughs> heading up the, the writing events at the pharmacy, but I teach, you know, composition, literature from remedial to honors and, and everywhere in between. So. I teach shop. I'm the, I'm the gym teacher. <laughs> there was really nothing for me to actually hand that back off to you. Like, didn't really set it up for anything, but... Yeah, um, that's cool. It does, uh, do any of your students come to the shows or you get any support from your students? Oh uh, yeah, actually, you know, I have, uh, I've actually offered credit for, you know, coming out to workshop things at, at the, at the, uh, critiques and we've actually held, um, final readings for some of the UIS, uh, creative writing classes at the pharmacy. Uh, so, uh, like Megan Cass, this, uh, this is, pardon me. Assistant professor in the English department there has had her uh, creative writing students do their final readings at the pharmacy instead of a classroom, and it's, it's been kind of a nice sort of potluck atmosphere with an actual audience open to the public. So, uh, does some interesting things that way. Have you uh, had anybody take to like the public performance like that really well? And conversely, have any of your students just realized that? they don't want to be public speakers in any way, shape, or form? Uh, well, my students, I haven't had to, to, the, to the open mics. And to the, the creative writing students, well, that, that's, that's part of the game. I know, yeah, nobody's, nobody's broken down just yet. Uh, so far, so good. So what's kind of the most bizarre stuff that you've had that some of your students come up with, or even some of the people at the uh, pharmacy come up with? Oh, uh, well, um, you can't beat Drew. You can't beat Drew and Drew's shtick. I mean, actually, Are you ready can we do for this? Revolution?
mistakes. Oh, it's terrible. Now, I'm dressed to a theme tonight. I don't know if anybody can tell, but I'm Lady Liberty. Mm. Have you met my friend, Corporate America? He's sometimes known as Bubba Liberty. Mm. Yeah. Thanks to the hey, Supreme Court, Mr. Cut that out. Cut that out. There's kids here. Oh, his pipeline's so big, I can't wait to see some oil in it. Thanks to the Supreme Court Citizen United ruling, what you have on stage is more than just a lettering. It's a reality, kids. Hey, watch He's that. Fine. I'm very business friendly, if you know what I mean. Hey, God, isn't there something going on? That's how it looks. <laughs> Feel free to write your own jokes. Now, on the topic of open source, freedom of information, freedom of expression, freedom of communication, this show is an open source art show. Nobody owns Third Thursday. Nobody runs Third Thursday. It is produced by a community of peers who seek only to improve the situation. There are no personal gains involved. That is an open source event. Just like an open source program. Now, some people have the audacity to say that Third Thursday is not an actual art show. Come on, let me hear some rumors. In 1991, a rogue programmer developed an operating system to compete with Windows and the Mac versions. That system is known as Linux, and it now has versions called Ubuntu and Xubuntu, which I use, which are the third most popular operating systems in the world. Open source works. Open source is the answer, and open source is the future, in my humble opinion. Open source relies on transparency, freedom of communication, freedom of expression, and freedom of information, all covered under the First Amendment and freedom of speech. Now, there are people testing the limits of free speech right now. One of them's name is Bradley Manning. Bradley Manning. His name was Bradley Manning, and he was an intelligence analyst for the U.S. military. U.S. military. In pursuit of transparency, in pursuit of engaging a worldwide dialogue concerning war crimes committed by the United States, he went against the grain and did something that has been called traitorous. He released videos of the U.S. military murdering civilians and journalists in Baghdad in 2007. He war crimes. He released diplomatic cables that indicated that your tax dollars are going towards child prostitution rings in Afghanistan. Child prostitution rings in Afghanistan? And because he wanted you to know, and I would point out that Bradley Manning, when asked by the informant that turned him in, why don't you sell these things to our enemies? As a traitor would do, he said, that's not what I'm trying to do here. I want this information to go out to the world. Freedom. Freedom of speech, journalistic integrity, pursuing the truth at all costs, even when it's uncomfortable for the people that it implicates, which is much
sempre quando uma taça Quando o mundo só rica Será de graça E fica mais linda Por causa do amor Por causa do amor Cameron Council with Public Access, uh, Access Magazine. We're here at the uh, third Thursday Art Spooktacular. Yeah, imagine that was like witty and funny and everything. So anyway, I am here with Neil Drazen of the uh, Donnie's Homespun, uh, which is the venue where we're having the event. And uh, how you doing tonight, Donnie? Neil, sorry. <laughs> Pretty good. I'm used to Donnie. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and launch right into that. How did you come up with the name Donnie's? Um, a friend of mine and myself had a building in downtown Milwaukee, and um, we had one floor that was a clothing store. The second floor was a nightclub, and the, the, the third story was a recording studio. And uh, some people there in the downtown area started calling my friend Mele and I the downtown Dons. So we called each other Donnie uh, just for the hell of it, and... Uh, he, he is no longer with uh, the Donnie's uh, Corporation, and uh, now it's just myself, but that's how the name came about. So, let me get this right. Clothing store, nightclub, yes. record studio. Okay. Did Was that part of the business plan? Did you Was you just like brainstorming? It's like, well, let's... I really want to do a clothing store, but this other guy wants to do a nightclub. How in the hell does those three things go together? Um... Actually, we we bought the building, and we were just kind of like, well, you know, what should we? We got a good deal on it, and you know, we kind of restored it and thought, you know, well, what what can we do here? And you know, Mele was in the clothing, I was into music, and 
you know, we said, well, let's give this a try. So it literally was, okay, you know, three guys, they all wanted to do different, or two guys, and they all wanted to do something a little bit different. So well, that's cool. Um, so Milwaukee, what, uh, what brought you to Springfield? Um, I actually moved to Decatur about uh, eight years ago and, uh, you know, uh, cleaned my act up a little bit and get away from the city. And I, uh, you know, had been out west for a while, too, and just... Uh, kind of needed to clean my act up and uh, you know I got a little history here um, my family started Sunbeam Bread over in um, uh, Indicator so um, I came back to my roots for a minute <laughs> and yes Springfield I'm sorry you're not a city you're like, comparatively speaking Milwaukee Springfield Milwaukee Springfield so anyway back me up with this Neil um, where were we? <laughs> Springfield. Oh, Springfield. Um, are you talking about the size of Springfield? To yes. Milwaukee? Compare Milwaukee to Springfield. Um, well, there's probably uh, four Menards there, and there's two in Springfield. <laughs> okay. I, I've never heard a town judged by their Menards, but that's uh, usually a pretty good indicator, I guess. So, And, and I know I'm going to get a lot of crap for the whole Springfield joke there, especially since you know I ran for city council or kind of hobbled for city council. But uh, no, I had 12 votes. Drew voted for me. Mr. Bubba Liberty himself. So, But uh, very cool, very cool. And uh, so what... Uh, what made you decide to open up Donnie's here? Um, I was approached by the uh, hunters, the people that actually own the building here, and I have a Donnie's in Decatur, and uh, they kind of heard about, uh, I kind of came in in an old area there and brought it up right by Millican University, and uh, the, the area is kind of thriving now, and they kind of heard about it, and they came and approached me and you know, took me to the building here, and when I first seen the building, I had absolutely no interest in it, um, but I said, if uh, you want to finance a project, um, I, you know, I'd have to stay in the building for probably five days for, uh, you know, an average of three hours to feel it out, and uh, you know, after being here about the fifth day, I said, maybe something could work. <laughs> did you, did you sleep here or anything? No. God, no. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I thought you maybe like camped out in a corner somewhere for three days. So, oh, but I would kind of just sit down here in a corner and just sit down here and try to envision something, or upstairs while it was the pizza machine. And you know, it, it, it seemed like a lot of work, but I, you know, uh, seen that there was some potential. Very cool. And uh, just for the record, this is being taped on uh, October 18th, which is the third Thursday for October. Uh, so, Neil, how long have you been open? <laughs> oh, about uh, this Friday will be three weeks. Three weeks. So, uh, three weeks, and you're already having a great little event like this. So, was that uh, your idea, or did they approach you? or? Uh, they approached me, and uh, this is the – I haven't had this much fun yet until tonight. He's just saying that, folks. But uh, it is a pretty good time. It's definitely a great time. So, uh, do you uh, hopefully anticipate having a lot more events like this in the, in the future? Yeah, I mean, to me, it, it reminds me of uh, uh, somewhat of a Grateful Dead parking lot. You know, I followed the dead from 88 to 95, continuously living on a school bus, so I'm pretty hip to, uh, you know, pretty open, liberal things, you know. If I had it my way, we'd have this going on every day. Very cool, very cool. And uh, do you have any other big events coming up uh, in the near future? I know we was talking uh, a little bit about the Whalers, which is... Uh, November 9th, and what time does that kick off? The 9th? That'll kick off at about 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock? Uh, the Untouchable Force of Rhythm opening up for them, and um, that, that'll be a good show. Very cool. The uh, For ticket information, that's donnyshomespun.com uh, and everything. So, And what else, uh, what else do you have on the itinerary for the near future? Uh, we've got the Reverend Horton Heat on November 28th, and we're looking at uh, leftover salmon for um, December 30th. Very cool. And uh, information uh, is on the website for that as well? Yes. Okay. Um, very cool. Uh, do you have any kind of events like this at the other Donnie's? Is the, the Decatur as cool as Springfield? Um, yes, it's a little smaller, 
and um, uh, you know that whole place is full full of art. There's not a you know an inch on the wall where you, you know there's nothing. But it's the same as here. But I call this is Donnie's on steroids. <laughs> Donnie's on steroids. Okay. Um, what a what uh did you like during your three days that you was here trying to figure out or five days or whatever it was trying to figure out what you was going to do did you uh have any of those oh crap what am i going to do moments um no the first thing that went through my head was uh you know i hope these people have a lot of money because you know you never want to start a project and and not be backed to where you you can't do what you're envisioning doing you know what i mean and um and you know financially you know to, to you know do something like this you got you got to have it or else it it won't work you know and i wanted to make sure it was right and um, you know but yeah there were some i had the oh shit moments those usually come about 2 days before you're going to open because you're like is anybody going to show up here and that was you know the same fear i had before you know but I, i've always thought if you try to provide something good for the public you know and and you know uh, you know not try to take their arm with them you know um, you know that's that's what I'm trying to do. What uh, for those of you who may be inter- or maybe uh, uh, familiar with the pizza machine and everything, uh, this is the old pizza machine uh, uh, room and building. Uh, what all kind of major renovation did you have to do for to make it from the pizza machine to Donnie's? We pretty much gutted out everything that was in here except for the railings. And, uh, you know, we had six dumpsters full of stuff, um, you know, just in the demo. And then I tore up a, uh, a barn my family had and uh, all the wood and um, steel stuff you see in here is all from a barn that was from 1867. So, um, you know, I actually tore down a barn when I got the OK and then, you know. Yeah, it's always good to get permission, you know, kids before you tear down barns. That's kind of a no-no to tear down barns before you, before you have permission. <laughs> Except Drew would do something like that. So, but uh, very cool. Um, I uh, keep on hearing that this is the biggest, uh, biggest stage in Springfield. Do you have anything to comment about that? Um, you know, if it is, that's great. You know, and I, I hope we can put a lot of people on it and uh, you know give give you know people an opportunity to play um, music. You must have uh, obviously been thinking that this was going to be like more of a of a concert venue to either uh, did you have to build the entire stage or was that already here from the pizza machine days or no we had to build that so you pretty much knew you was going to be kind of a concert venue as well so yes yes all righty very cool uh, go ahead and uh, give everybody out there uh, kind of a little taste of. Uh, the flavor of the the restaurant you know what kind of stuff you serve and and uh, where you are and uh, uh, hopefully we'll get some people out here to uh, come and say hi awesome yeah um, you know the food here obviously um, you know I didn't talk about that but uh, you know I, I, I did uh, sit in a room with uh, two different Italian families and um, you know it was pretty much like a Godfather movie and 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 asked for permission and I hadn't seen these people in years and you know i had to sit in a room with some people and they you know gave their blessings and they gave me the recipes for all the pizza everything is homemade uh dough sauce and then i kind of took a twist of you know uh the vegetarian lifestyle threw some of that in there and you know acquire a, a little fish now and some barbecue and uh you know just trying to serve the public with some you know good food and everything we have here is uh is fresh you know the meats uh, cheeses, everything, um, you know, there's no additives or preservatives in any of the products we're selling. I kind of noticed, you know, with the menu that, you know, it seemed more towards like the the fresh spin on things and um, in a lot of cases, you know, very European sense of a lot of things. Uh, I had a European deli sandwich tonight, it was very good, so, but uh, very cool. And uh, just for those who may not be familiar, go ahead and give us the address. Could you say that? Oh, the address of uh, the place here? Uh, 107 West Cook. Can I get that canvas up there? But uh, I am uh, Cameron Counts, and this is uh, Public Access Magazine, and we're live here at Access 4. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks, Neil, for uh, talking to us tonight.